everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Border City Rock Talk. We get great news, great interviews, great interviewees with sometimes a comedic touch. Uh, this is my last interview before the new year and the holidays. So Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and Happy Festivus for the rest of us. Before further ado, I bring to you Nikki Stringfield. How are you doing, Nikki? I'm awesome. Ready for the holidays. Can't wait. Do you have all your shopping done? That's actually what I'm about to go do right after I get off here with you. I haven't started at all yet, so uh, yeah, I'm a little late this year. I forgot to actually to mail your card to you and Patrick, so here it is. Oh, I love it. So there we go. <laughs> we'll get that to you soon. <laughs> um, so yeah, you've been on the road quite a bit, and we um, we were struggling to get this in before the new year, before the holiday. I appreciate uh, your time. Um, what did you get off the road just a couple of days ago? Yesterday. Wow. Yesterday morning, because uh, we we left so early. We played um, we played my hometown of Dallas, uh, Wichita Falls, and Oklahoma City, and we flew out so early yesterday. So I basically came home and <laughs> unpacked and slept most of the day. And you're doing the just you're doing the Iron Maidens. You're doing your solo stuff, and you're also in Heaven Below heavens below so yeah. you have three you're juggling three three kind of different entre, on, entrepreneurs i told you it'd be funny um <laughs> enterprises right now so how is that how do you how do you manage to do that is it just because you're so excited and interested in what you do it doesn't seem like work that it's almost that you you just uh thrive from it Pretty much. I, I love doing a ton of different things. I love staying busy. And like you said, it doesn't seem like work when you love it. I never thought I'd get to do music pretty much full time. And it's definitely it's definitely full time. Uh, it's difficult to make all the pieces fit in between the Maiden's busy schedule because it has been a really busy year. Uh, and I also do acoustic gigs when the Maidens aren't touring. So whenever the Maidens aren't touring, I'm just trying to fill in um, solo shows, acoustic gigs as much as possible. And after the new, like Heaven Below has a new album coming out next year. So on top of that, you know, we're going to be doing Heaven Below shows with that album release too. And that's with your husband, Patrick, who is actually, um, he's a guitarist with Lita Ford. Uh -huh. Yeah, so that makes it even harder <laughs> trying to make things happen between both of our touring schedules. So it's a, it's a, it's a challenge. For sure, but we love doing it. And we just love love creating music and playing music. Awesome. So um your first um your EP um Harmonies of the Haunted came out in 2019. And then you released an album this year, Asphyxia. No, it's not Asphyxia. How do you pronounce it? <laughs> a, 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 apocrypha, is that correct? That's right. I don't know, oh. but if <laughs> asphyxia, that could be the next one. So explain um, the definition of a, how do you pronounce it? Upper, apocrypha. Apocrypha. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> Apocryphy, I, sorry. So I'm a huge uh, history nerd and uh, science nerd. I, I love watching documentaries and I love aliens. So of course, I oh, watch, wow. yeah, I watch ancient aliens. And I think that's probably where I heard about it as uh, they were talking about the uh, all of the texts that were forbidden from the Bible called the Apocrypha, and oh. when uh, you translate it to Greek, quite it just it means forbidden text. So I thought that sounded cool. And harmonies for the haunted is long and drawn out, so I just wanted a one word. <laughs> I guess not the easiest thing to say because I have so many people asking how to say it, but I liked I just Apocrypha it sounds apocalyptic, and the the album was kind of apocalyptic being written in the uh, pandemic when the world was going crazy so yeah. yeah well that's that's amazing because i'm interested in all of that stuff too the nephilim and all those things you got to check out this great um youtube channel ufos politics comedy and culture oh yeah that's my oh. other channel i'm just plugging that oh, really? plugging. <laughs> oh that's awesome. i like i i i know what you're saying about um ancient aliens and all that stuff with george nori and Art Bell. So that's pretty cool that you're interested in that for sure. Um, so are you still uh, going to be promoting some shows for that album to, you know, just keep pushing that album or, and, and I hear you might be working on another one. Absolutely. Below. 
Yeah, um, I feel like we just started. I, you know, we I did uh, two solo shows in Arizona um, two weekends ago. So I've done three solo shows. I mean, it's it's a totally new thing. I didn't I didn't get to get out and do shows for Harmonies for the Haunted. So we're definitely planning on still pushing this album all next year as much as we can. We have uh, I'm playing the Schecter Indie Nam Party wow. on January 26th. And that's that kind of comes full circle for me because Nam is where I got my start, and I went to the first Indie Nam thing for me was in 2012. So really stoked to be playing that. And then two days later, I'll be opening for John Five in Vegas. I was just gonna say that at Count Vamped, isn't that something? So so excited for that. So really, I mean, I would love to focus on the solo stuff as much as possible for sure. Awesome. Um, yeah, just beginning. So right now, I'm sure that the um, the uh, the touring and the um, scheduling for next year is just starting to come in. Um, are there a lot of dates with the maidens already booked that haven't been you know released to the public yet? Yeah, we're we're pretty pretty light in January and February. Uh, actually, we have no shows in January, so uh, I'm going to be using that time as much as I can for the solo stuff. But February, we've got some shows that are not announced as well as March. And well, yeah, April and May are already looking really busy. So, yep, lots of uh, lots of un, um, announced shows coming up. Awesome. Next year. So, so, yeah, year. Perfect. Um, so what, what made you decide? I know you sing as well. What made you decide to uh, pick up the guitar? Who was your influence? Well, my dad played guitar, too. So I grew up with him always playing and, and rehearsing and there was always an acoustic laying around. So he got me my first guitar, but it took a while for me to actually want to go sit down and pick it up and be serious with it. So I started listening to Nirvana and they became my favorite band. And that really made me decide to pick it up and teach myself. I bought the Nirvana tab, the greatest hits tab book. And I just sat down and I taught myself all the songs. And it kind of went from there. And then Sinister Gates is who really got me into playing all the solos and the lead stuff. I can't believe you uh, remember Tablature. I love Tablature. <laughs> That's, I don't know theory at all. I, I I tried taking lessons and when I already knew how to play just to learn the theory, but it always turned into, let's just learn a song. I'm like, I can already play. Like, I, I just want to know the theory behind it. So yeah, kind of a, yeah, self-taught. Thank you, tabs. Thank you, guitar tabs. <laughs> guitar tab is the best. Zeros and ones and twos and threes. So um, is your dad named Rick? Randy. No, <laughs> Rick. I'm just, um, oh, so, yeah. You know what? People ask me that all the time, though. They really think you're related to Rick, aren't you? <laughs> actually, speaking, because I, I I may not be the sharpest um, hook in the tackle box, but I mean, guitar player, the name Nikki Stringfield. So just tell me honestly, when did you decide to use Nikki as your stage name? Nikki or Stringfield? <laughs> that's that's that's, actually, that's the joke part. Yeah, hey, Stringfield oh. actually, it's actually my last, my for real last name. No way. It is my real like when I worked at Schechter, I had to get my ID out to prove to them that Stringfield is indeed my real last name. Really, that's yeah. interesting. I did not know that. I did not know yeah. that. So actually, Nikki comes from my middle name. So there you go. Yeah, well, that's uh, it's fitting. It must have been in the stars. You know what's funny is I always said I was gonna change and have a stage name because I, you know, I didn't think Stringfield was cool, but here we are. It works perfectly. Well, what would you change it to? <laughs> you already I have know. a stage name. <laughs> I have no idea. I never got that far. <laughs> Strings. Oh. Uh, my old uh, singer of my first band would always call me Strings, and that just kind of stuck. So. Okay, cool. Well, String Stringfield might be a little bit, yeah, out there. Strings. But I got a question for you. So, um, I was thinking about this just a few minutes ago before we went on the air here. What is your favorite guitar solo? Maybe not necessarily to play, but to listen to. Like for me, it would be something from Randy Rhodes, like maybe the solo to Tonight or Mr. Crowley. God, a uh, favorite guitar solo to play. I could tell you it's uh, the Power Slave solos. Uh, oh, yeah. The melodic. Uh, those are my favorite one, my favorite Dave ones to play. Um, God. Favorite, I guess, uh, 
since growing up, uh, since everything was so new to me for with the Avenged Sevenfold stuff, it might be um, the Seize the Day solo, which is just uh, really melodic. And then at the end, it's got the the sweeps at the end. And I, I really liked that. Oh, wow. But I don't, I'm not sure what my favorite solo would be. So Maybe what would I'm... be the hardest one to play with? Like, obviously, you're, uh, you know, you're a seasoned and talented guitar player because you can't play anything by Iron Maiden that's if you're not talented. And I'm, I'm not just saying that it's true. They're so just well-rounded and everything. What would be the hardest and maybe the most complicated solo that you would play with Maiden uh, when you first joined or first started playing that you had more of a challenge with? Is there a song? Yeah, I, I think the one, because it's kind of, it's it's kind of got weird timing to it is the solo from Caught Somewhere in Time. Mm -hmm. It's, it's kind of, all over the place a little bit I guess it took so that one was a and plus when I started playing the the maiden stuff I always was more of a I like doing a lot of the sweet picking a lot of the fast picking and Dave is a very legato crazy crazy fast hammer-ons and pull-offs so that I I had to kind of re you know learn how to play the solos with his stuff because he is just so fast and fluid and I whereas I was more about the fast picking but uh, somewhere in time, caught somewhere in time, the solo is it's different. It's yeah. Kind of weird have you have you met the uh, anybody from uh, Maiden? I we played on stage with Paul Diano in, okay. in London. Um, that was awesome. He sang Wrath Child and I think Iron Maiden with us. And then uh, Michael Kinney, who was their keyboard player. Mm -hmm. I know, but I have not met any of the other guys actually. It's it's just never. Like we, I've stood right beside Steve Harris on one of the Monsters of Rock cruises, but I, he had his big old bodyguard next to him. So, oh, he's got a bodyguard. Oh, come on, Steve, don't be so. Yeah, yeah. on the cruise, we'd be like, oh, oh, there he is. He's just over there eating eating lunch. Let's let's not bother him. You know. Oh my goodness! Wow. Yeah, I know. I'm a definitely a big Maiden fan. Um, so I, I said earlier I wouldn't keep you very long because I know you're busy and you got to go Christmas shopping and don't have to get just get me if you're gonna get me anything, um just get me the same thing as last year just a different color okay. So not pink this year. Yeah, I don't want pink. <laughs> uh, sparkles then. Was that? Sparkles then glitter. Yeah, let's go with glitter. Some non Gary glitter. Um, where can people go and get any kind of merch? Because it's still time, guys, to get some merch from Nikki Stringfield uh, for your favorite Nikki Stringfield fans out there. Where can they go and get that? I I have a website, uh, Nikki-Stringfield.com. And I have a big uh, cartel web store. I'm like currently working on updating everything. But yeah, Nikki-Stringfield.com. And I will be leaving. We are driving to Texas for Christmas. So I will be shipping out any orders before Wednesday. Yeah. Okay, today's what? Monday? All right, I'll have this up in the next 12 hours. That's my gift to you and Patrick. Um, and that way we can get you some merch. And uh, your tour dates are on that website as well. Everything should, well, gosh, I have to, that's what I'm going to be doing these next few days is updating everything. But yes, tour dates will be up soon as well. Okay, favorite Canadian band musician guitarist or artist oh uh brian adams awesome brian adams is one of our great uh exports to the world last question nikki the opposite of unsubscribe subscribe everybody do as nikki stringfield of the <laughs> Iron maidens and heaven's da heaven's below says and subscribe to the channel for these great interviews and great interviewees and once again, thanks for your time, Nikki. And I hope you and uh, Patrick and everybody and the Maidens and um, all your friends and family have a great new year. Absolutely. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy new year. Happy everything. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Bye-bye.